guest today quickly became a prominent voice through the pandemic, offering public health solutions from his home right here in the Twin Cities. Andy Slavitt just wrapped up his time as President Biden's senior advisor on COVID-19, and he is out with a new book on the pandemic. It is called Preventable and discusses mistakes that were made and also ways that we can move forward. And joining us live now is Andy Slavitt. Good morning. Morning. It's a pleasure to meet you. Okay, so I'm sure everybody's trying to, you know, pick your brain. Uh, you just left your role as President Biden's advisor. This was just a couple of weeks ago. So, what would you say? Are we on the right track right now to beating this virus? Yeah. Look, I'd say that we have come an incredible distance as a country, and we should all feel really good about this. You know, we came from a place where we were ravaged by this pandemic. Thousands were dying every day. And it was overwhelming our lives to the place where today I would describe it as a manageable challenge. And we have lots of manageable challenges in our lives. This is just one of them. So if people have been vaccinated, they are hopefully getting all the things in their life back that they missed during the pandemic. If they're not, uh, then they're still at some risk. And I hope that they're considering getting vaccinated. Yeah, absolutely. So in addition to working with President Biden, you also advised Governor Walz. Can you talk about that experience and how you feel about Minnesota's response to the pandemic? Well, look, let, let me just start out by saying uh, nobody signed up to become a governor during a pandemic, and it's not an easy task, and nobody's going to do it perfectly. You know, Minnesota was lucky enough to have a governor who had a great team, who was honest with the public, who made the tough decisions, didn't always have a supportive legislature, so it wasn't always easy, wasn't always popular, was choosing between difficult things, but but really I think did a, a really able job of managing our way through this, and I think we should be um, we should be quite proud um, of the of the work we've done, not just of the governor, but of all Minnesotans. Yeah, we have no doubt that is a difficult job, and he faced criticism, and no, no governor wants to be a governor during a pandemic. But let's talk about your book now and discussing some solutions that will prevent another pandemic. So what do you think we need to do from this point, what you have learned in moving forward? Well, the book tells the story of a number of different people. One of them is a Minnesotan named Ahmed Aden, who works at an um, Amazon plant and came down with COVID. And watching his story tells a good picture of a lot of things that need to change. Because once he got COVID, he couldn't get a test because there weren't any available. Amazon stopped paying him because he couldn't demonstrate a COVID test. His wife has cancer and his, one of his sons has cerebral palsy, he lives in a two bedroom apartment with five people in Minneapolis, um, was, was home and affected, infected several of them. So he wasn't getting paid, lost his health insurance uh, and wasn't on his job while he was sick. So that should tell us a little bit about what's wrong in this country, which is that we put a lot of burden on a number of people. Um, and meanwhile, I think you know there were other people to whom they weren't quite as much at risk, people like myself who were able to be home and on Zoom and getting Amazon packages. So I think there's a lot of things for us to look at. Um, I point uh, to some extent to the political leadership in Washington at the time, which made, I think, a lot of bad mistakes. Um, and I point to, uh, some of the, the the structure in our society. So I think we'll fix our technical mistakes that we made, and there were some of those, but the harder mistakes are the things that are deeper rooted in our country. Yeah, really interesting hearing some of those little anecdotes from your book and talking about all of these things that we've learned over this year plus and just unprecedented times. I want to talk to you, though, about vaccines and vaccination rates. You know, at first we saw those rates really skyrocket, and now every day we see the numbers have kind of come to a crawl, a slowdown as more and more people get vaccinated. So our question for you is, have we done enough on the vaccination front? Well, look, we have to remember that there's a number of people to whom getting vaccinated was an easy decision. I would count myself among them. And there's a number of other people to whom um, it's a more considered decision. It's just take, taking longer time for them. And those people, we want to make sure they get the information that they need in order to, to make these uh, decisions and make sure people know the importance of the vaccines. The vaccines are incredibly um, well tolerated and incredibly effective. And some people just need to be, you know, need to make some time to, to see that. What we've seen overall is that for people over 30, 70% of them have been vaccinated. So the, the real challenge we have is that people under 30 um, who just didn't feel as, draw, as great a threat from COVID, maybe many of them had COVID, you know, they're lagging. And I think um, they will be more exposed and we'll all be a little bit more exposed 
should uh, more dangerous variants come into Minnesota if they don't get vaccinated. Yeah, yeah we've certainly heard t teenagers, young people are not getting uh, the vaccine as, as quickly as we need them to, to get rid of this, you know, uh, to get rid of COVID and it doesn't look like it's going to completely disappear. So uh, do we need to be concerned? I mean, obviously the, the new waves that are coming through and we've had pandemics before, uh, like at a scale of one to 10, where are you as far as, you know, your concern about another, you know, another COVID coming? Well, look, I think we can expect there to be more cases in the fall, but they'll be almost entirely with people who are unvaccinated. And I think there'll be fewer. But if you've been vaccinated, look, the most important thing you can do right now is get the parts of your life back that you had to surrender to the pandemic uh, because you're at very low risk. There's many, of, if you want to be worried about something, there's far greater risks to you. Um, if you haven't been vaccinated, then I think, you know, there there is reason to believe that you could be infected and you could be infected as things come back. The new form of COVID, which they call the Delta variant, is like the 2020 version of COVID on steroids. It's about twice as easy to get because um, it spreads much easier. So, uh, you know, I, I would strongly advise people who aren't sure about being vac vaccinated to talk to their physicians, uh, talk to pharmacists, talk to people you know have been vaccinated. Don't go on Facebook. Don't listen to politicians. Don't listen to me. Um, go talk to people you trust in the medical community. Okay. All right, Andy Slavitt, thank you so much for joining us, talking us to us about your new book, Preventable. Definitely a lot more to talk about on the pandemic front. Preventable is out right now and is available wherever books are sold.